So every once in a while, you come across something that just takes you completely by surprise. Like, you think you know how water and gravity work, right? You turn on the hose and water comes out. And then you see something like this. I mean, what exactly is going on here? If you think the camera has something to do with it, you're right. Today, we're gonna look at a whole bunch of illusions that mess with your visual perception. Some rely on camera tricks, others require special lighting, and some you can even see with nothing but your naked eye. But first, let's talk about how we wound up building this thing. My producer Juno and I had seen something like it online. We did some research and found that to make it ourselves, we would need a speaker, rubber tubing, a stand, a water source, a sump pump for circulating that water, and a lot of gaffer's tape. Here's the thing, we built this contraption so we know how it works, and we'll get to that in a second. But we also wanted to know why it works. Why our brains can be tricked into seeing the water in this very specific way. So we called up David Eagleman. He's a neuroscientist at Stanford and an expert on visual illusions. So have you seen one of these things before? Oh yeah, that is pretty amazing. I love that illusion. Yeah, exactly. It was it was super fun to build, but Juno and I are trying to figure out like sort of why it works, like on a neuromechanistic level. Is that something you think you could help us out with? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah. And there's actually a whole class of illusions that are like that. If you guys want to come down to my office in Palo Alto, we can build some stuff here and I'll show you guys some things. Yeah, that'd be sweet. So we took apart our contraption, drove down to Palo Alto, and put it back together with Eagleman inside his office. All right, so we've hacked this thing together. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this. All right. That looks so cool! <laughs> now, here's the thing. You can't actually see this effect with the naked eye. Oh my God, that looks amazing. So we're watching it through the cameras on our phones. Here's why. We're using a tone generator to run a specific frequency, in this case 24 hertz, which is 24 cycles per second, through that big speaker. When the speaker plays the tone, it vibrates at the same rate, causing the hose and the water flowing through it to undulate at the same frequency. To the naked eye, it looks like it's spraying everywhere, and it is, but it's not spraying randomly. If we set our camera to match the rate at which the water is moving, then we get this. Here's what it looks like to the naked eye. And here's what happens when we adjust the camera's frame rate. And if you manipulate the frequency deliberately, you can produce even more effects. So right now, our tone generator is pumping out 24 hertz. We're gonna offset that by one hertz. And so now, when I look at this through my phone, the corkscrew looks like it's traveling up, out of the bucket, into the tube. What's actually happening with this water, we're capturing a view of it um, that is no longer even, and so it looks like it's moving. Now, of course, the water isn't actually climbing up into the tube. Your brain is just telling you that it is. And that's because of something neuroscientists call apparent motion. When the brain receives a series of adjacent images in rapid succession, it interprets them as being in motion. It's the same reason old animations and flipbooks work. In video too. What's happening here is that the camera's frame rate is just barely out of sync with the vibration of the speaker. So instead of seeing the spiral in the same position every 24th of a second, we see it in what looks like a slightly higher position. And when you string together all those tiny shifts, it gives your brain the impression that the water is spiraling slowly upwards, or if you adjust the frequency of the tone generator, slowly downwards. Now, you don't usually see this kind of effect on camera, but there is one place that it pops up all the time. And that's when you see a wheel moving, on a car, for example. And that gave David an idea. Why don't we hop in the car and using the camera, film the wheel as we're driving and see if we can reproduce the wagon wheel illusion. Awesome. Okay, cool. That sounds Let's do good. That. Let's all do right. it. Great. Now, you may not have heard of the wagon wheel illusion, but you have definitely seen it. So our producer Juno is going to be hanging out the window with a GoPro on a selfie stick. Okay. David in the back has a live view of what's happening Ooh, on I'm an iPhone. Oh, I've already seen it. Oh, geez, beautiful. It's cool, right? Here's what's happening. The frame rate on the camera is perfectly matched with the rate of the wheel's rotation. So every time it captures an image, the spokes appear to be in the same position. 
And just like we saw with the spiraling water, weird things happen when the frame rate is just slightly out of sync with the motion of the object being filmed. But actually keep going. So as you're going straight here, okay, yeah, it's beautiful. It's going backwards here at this speed. It's just going fully backwards. Right here, I'm doing a pretty bad job of driving at a consistent speed, which is why the spokes go from looking like they're spinning slowly backwards to standing still to drifting slowly forwards all in the span of a few seconds. With the spiraling water illusion, we flipped the switch and the water immediately vibrated at the exact frequency we wanted. But here, the rate at which the wheel is rotating fluctuates based on how slow or fast I drive, which changes what the camera sees at a fixed frame rate. Oh my God, that's wild. Watch that footage again, but this time, pay attention to the wheel's bolts. I mean, the really wacky part, I had just never noticed this before is there are five bolts and seven spikes, and because of the differences in the distances there, they are doing different things. So the bolts right now look like they're moving backwards, and the spokes at this exact moment are not doing anything. They're just, they're essentially still. But the bolts are zipping around like crazy, because your brain doesn't know that that's actually spoke number one, and then spoke number two, and spoke number three in that position. It just looks the same to it. That's the, cool. the bolts, on the other hand, are changing position, and so your brain picks the shortest direction and says, oh, okay, I think it must be rotating that way as opposed to that way. Remember apparent motion? It applies here too. Because the bolts in each frame appear to shift ever so slightly counterclockwise, your brain interprets them as spinning backwards. Okay, so that was sweet. But just like this speaker illusion, that's requiring the camera to work. Right. We can't see it with the naked eye. Right. But there is a way to do that. Yeah, we can do that uh, essentially with a strobe light by uh, illuminating for us where we see the thing and then we see the thing we see every 24, you know, 24 times a second. We could, we could capture the same thing without a camera. Right, and you actually yeah. showed me you've got like a little yeah, desktop thing, yeah. right? Yeah, let me grab this. So this is the levitating water illusion. So this has a pump in it. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> that's cool. so, so even though it looks like that's one drop, that's actually catching one drop at that position and then catching the next drop at a position just above that, the next drop at a position just above that. So what you see because of the strobing is this going up. Yeah. By switching the rate at which it's dripping, we can make it stand still, we can That's make it cool. go the other way in slow motion. So essentially you can change the rate at which it's dripping and you can change the, uh, the rate at which the strobe lights are flickering. So the cool thing to me about this illusion is that you don't need a camera to make it work. You can actually see it with your naked eye with a little help from the strobe light. Yeah, exactly. It's because the strobe light is illuminating, though it's turning on the world uh, several times a second, just like a camera frame is doing. And because of that, we can make the drops stand still because we're catching one drop and then the next drop and the next drop in the same position. That's when we're turning on right. the illumination. And so you can make it run backwards. Exactly. If you catch this next drop just a little bit higher, then your visual system says, well, I saw that guy and then I saw that guy. It must be the same guy. It looks like it's climbing up. Right. So, you know, normally in evolutionary time, we saw things under continuous sunlight or with firelight or whatever. So this is a very unusual situation for our visual systems to have to deal with where it sees something illuminated and then that goes away. And the next time we see illumination, it happens to be something in the exact same spot or really close by it. Yeah. There is an illusion that is related to this in which you don't need a strobe light at all. You don't need a camera at all. You can see it under constant sunlight. You can see the direction of a moving object reversing. It's a very strange thing, and we can build that, actually, if you want. We can build that up. Yeah. All right, why don't you have a seat? Okay, so the key is find a spot that you can stare at that's not moving. In other words, don't track the dots with your eyes. Here's a view of what I'm seeing. If you haven't already, full screen this video. We're gonna run this shot for a long time so you can try it for yourself. Fix your eyes on the white dot and keep them steady. Try not to let them follow the black circles as they whip past. Now try not to blink and be patient. Stare long enough and something strange should happen. Every so often, the direction that the dots are spinning will appear to flip. It only happens occasionally and while it happens for some people more than others, the effect never lasts more than a few seconds. And here's the difference between what you're seeing here and the spiraling water and wagon wheel illusions. Those effects happen at the same time for everyone because the camera is driving the illusion. 
But in this case, everyone sees it a little bit differently because it's not the camera that's responsible for the effect. It's you. Did you get it to work? If not, don't worry. We've included an extended version of this shot in the show notes for you to try at home. So what's going on? You might think this happens because our brains process visual information the way a camera does, in discrete frames. But David says that's not the case. Okay, so what's to say that the frame rate at which my brain processes it isn't just changing all the time? Yeah, good question. So in order to address that, what I came up with was a way to test whether your brain is taking discrete snapshots of the visual scene all at once. And that was a very inexpensive test that took $5 and a mirror. Do you want to try that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to ask you to scoot around to that end of the table. And what I have here is a big mirror. And I'm going to put this here so that you see two, two drums rotating now. You should see them about side by side. Is that what you see? Yep. The question is, do you see both drums reverse direction at the same time when you see a reversal? Or do you see one drum reverse, and then a different drum reverse, and then the first drum reverse again? Take a look. The rotating dots on the right are in the real world. The ones on the left are the reflection. Just like last time, focus on the white dot and keep your eyes steady. Soften your gaze a little bit and wait. The mirror is showing you a perfect visual double of the original device. And that is the key to this experiment. If our brains did in fact process visual information the way cameras do in discrete frames, then you would expect both sets of dots to always switch directions at the same time time. But that's not what happens. You have mechanisms in your brain to detect leftward motion. And then those are picking up on that and saying, oh, you clearly have leftward motion in your world. But you also have mechanisms for rightward motion. And it turns out that those rightward mechanisms can be fooled by a lot of leftward motion like this. The rightward guys get a little bit activated by leftward motion. So what happens is when you stare at this motion for a long time, your brain is pretty sure it's going to the left but it has a little bit of a hypothesis that maybe it's moving to the right. And so those are in battle with one another. And so every once in a while, the right story wins just a little bit. Now this is very similar to other things that we've seen, like, like with a cube that's drawn just the wireframe of the cube. Yeah, Necker cube. The Necker cube. Sometimes you see it coming out one way or you see it going out the other way and those switch back and forth. But those happen to have the same probability, 50-50 chance that it might be one way or the other. This has like a 95 versus 5% chance. So this is more rare. You have to stare at it for a little while to see it come out once in a while. So you have populations of cells in your brain that are fighting for both stories. And it's just a matter of which population dominates the hill at any given moment. That's what you perceive. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's all because your brain is locked in silence and darkness. It's not seeing any of this directly. It's putting together a story of what's going on in the outside world based on the little signals that it sees. That's why there's so many different types of illusions. And these illusions aren't just for fun. They reveal interesting things about the way we're wired and how we experience the world. So in the end, if our brains tell us stories that mess with our perception of reality, that's not necessarily a bad thing.